Back to Dark Souls once again. The same old stomping grounds with the same old glitches to abuse like hell. Maybe that's why I never jump back into DS3 or Bloodborne for this type of stuff yet. That being said, jumping isn't exactly something we'll be doing today. Howdy, I'm Prakaza and welcome to Death Box, where we take games and pick around their insides to see what makes them tick. Today we'll be trying out a challenge run to push our current target to the limits of what is possible within the game's systems. In this case, we're going to be taking a look at Dark Souls Remastered and asking the question, can we beat the game while completely over-encumbered? Or overweight? Or overloaded? I'm not actually sure what Dark Souls 1 calls it. A Fallout language it is. We're over-encumbered. So, as with every challenge run under the sun, this once again doesn't start in the Undead Asylum, but fairly deep into Lord Ran. You might notice I'm already in the Darkroot Garden, and I took the same path here as in the Claw Run. Go ahead and check out that video in the I card up at the top, if I can figure out how to get that done, if you want to see how to get here early without the seal from Andre. The point is, we've started as the thief, so that we can have the master key and we're getting nicely equipped with a set of stone armor. This is how we're going to set ourselves to be as heavy as possible. On my way to heading out and grabbing this gear, I also made it a point to not kill any major enemies or grab any pickups on my way. If the question is whether or not I can make it through this while stomping around at this breakneck pace, then gathering items should also take this time. And let me tell you, I'm not normally patient enough to walk around the entire game like this. I can barely pay attention long enough to walk from Firelink Shrine to Undead Burg at light load. Seriously, warping should be available from the start. Fuck your immersion, give me convenience. So, would you believe that pretty early on, watching my character's rhythmic footsteps that I fell into a bit of a flow state? Like, I knew Dark Souls and its contemporaries are well known for activating a flow state during combat and exploration, having reactions and knowledge pull the player through from moment to moment, but I never expected just walking slowly through Lordran would feel this peaceful. You know, minus all the dudes trying to kill me. But they don't do too well against my Black Knight halberd. Fortunately, starting as a thief means that the Black Knight kill is actually pretty easy to accomplish. Then again, I feel like I've seen plenty of the old Black Knight halberd. Maybe we should change up the pace with a new weapon for the majority of this run. This is going to mean getting all geared up, so we're heading into Sen's Fortress pretty early since my weapon drop luck only ever begins and ends at the damn halberd. Which means we're back to the Sen skip, and guess what? It works while over encumbered. As long as you can get into position without an active weapon in the right hand, then just repost this dude down here and we're golden. But, uh, careful about that positioning, because the death field that the cam is responding to might actually kill you. Uh, you got me a couple times on this run. Alright, now it's time to head down into Sen's Fortress. It takes a while to make the trip in this armor, so maybe finish the guy you reposted first, because you're not going to be able to run away from him now. Now that we're inside the gate, though, a quick quit out ought to give us access to some pretty difficult fights. Four of them, to be precise. Yep. We're after the Titanite Demons, and not because we want their material drops. No, we're fighting these big boys, and dying, and resetting, and redoing the skip, because we want the other thing they can drop. Their weapon, the Titanite Catchpole. As far as Twinkling Titanite upgraded halberds goes, it's no Black Knight halberd, but it isn't the worst thing out there. Among that extremely niche set of weapon types. In fact, this is a favorite of mine when it comes to casual playthroughs, especially for intelligence builds that are taking the conventional route to my Guiding Moonlight. But that's a story for another- hold up, we've already done that one. Anyway, no, we're just getting started, in fact. With the Titanite Catchpole in my hands, I should have access to some traversal that had previously been slightly out of reach, like the path to the Undead Asylum. I'd love to get the Stray Demon out of the way quickly and pick up the doll to go kill Priscilla later... Um, let's... Let's try that jump again. Still not working, huh? Okay, one more time, one more time. Right at the edge, and again, and no. Damn, looks like being over-encumbered means that we can't get across this gap, which means no Stray Demon or Priscilla. Guess this won't be an all-bosses run. Man, and I was all ready to jump into the DLC again, too. I had already killed those bosses in the Moonlight Greatsword run. Not that anybody saw that. I was looking to shake off the rest of the rust. Oh, well. I might still kill them anyway, if I can get past the Hydra, that is. 
Anyway, first things first, we need to start making some progress. And I don't mean the glitchy skippy way. No, we're going for real progress today, which means heading up through Undead Burg and killing the Tauros Demon. He's a piece of cake as long as I keep from letting him knock me off the edge. And his archers can be taken care of pretty well before the fight even starts. I'll be honest, I might be using a cheesy weapon at this point, what with the send skip needed to get it. But just consider that this could be the Black Knight Halberd, or any of the other Black Knight weapons, without skipping. And I'd say this isn't too bad for any run that starts with the Mastery Key. Also, the alternate explanation could be that I farmed and reset on the Titanite Demon in the Undead Parish until the weapon dropped. All of that aside, the death of the Tauros Demon unlocks... nothing. Because we have the Master Key right from the start, which makes this fight completely optional. Well, I guess we're going for as many bosses as we can, so I'll take it. Moving forward, we can head back into Undead Parish to take on the Bell Gargoyles. But this might also be a great time to showcase some struggles that this build currently has. Namely, the lack of any meaningful dodge means that I have to block the majority of attacks, or tank through them with poise and go hit for hit on most enemies. So, the room right before the bell gargoyles is somewhat of a difficulty to get through. This swarm of hollows in the channel are buffing them specifically won't really allow for either of those options. Side note, I thought these dudes were called chancellors for the longest time. Regardless, even with my poise as high as it is in this massive stone armor, I can't just tank through everything this entire group throws at me, especially not if I want to have enough Estus to make it through the boss that comes after them. Fortunately, I start to get in tune with the wind-up of their attacks, and the wide swing of the catchpole is able to cleave through a few of them at a time. This certainly wasn't the hardest obstacle in the run, that's coming up, but it did take a few attempts to get through without taking too much damage. And interestingly, my fear of running out of Estus was somewhat unfounded as with each gargoyle going down in three and two hits respectively, the boss really is nowhere near an actual challenge with this weapon and high poise. So yeah, no healing necessary, and the first bell is rang with ease. Rung? Rangi? Whatever. I press the button in front of the big bell thingy. Well, with the gargoyles nice and dead, it's time to head to the canonically next boss on the list. Quailag! Now I know what you might be thinking, Proc, isn't the next boss the Copper Demon? And no. No, it's not. Also, don't let me put words in your mouth. Speak for yourself. Go down in the comments and put your own words in your own mouth and then barf them all over your keyboard. But the moral of the story is I'm not about to walk all the way through the depths and Blight Town in this heavy ass armor. Zen feeling or no, ain't nobody got time for that. So. For now, we'll be skipping a few bosses. Although, worry not, we'll be back eventually to clean up the stragglers here later. Getting to Quelag isn't quite as difficult as it would originally seem, and the Titanite catchpole finally comes in handy for getting onto the elevator down from the shortcut in New Londo. Additionally, taking a wide enough berth on the approach to the boss room also means not having to really worry about the rock-throwing giant guys. Do they have a name? Looks like it's Infested Barbarian according to Vextra. I'm going to stick with Rock Throwing Giant. Moving on to Quelag herself, she's a bit tougher than the previous fights that led here. Not only is Quelag the most nimble boss so far, jumping and skittering around the arena like the spider demon she is, her health pool is also the highest we've seen. It's not Fire Giant level of big boofy boy, but she's clearly thick enough to withstand a handful of combos and still not go down. However, I am also rather chunk, not overly chunky, mind, with my overall vitality never going over 20 for this run. I knew this was going to be a tank build from the beginning, so uh, it wouldn't really be interesting if I just leveled my vitality up to 99 and ignored every attack that came my way. So, small stipulation on any of my leveling, health never gets above 20. And yes, that will become a problem in a little bit. Anyway, in the time I've been talking, Quelag did finally die, and I didn't. Definitely didn't. Not even close. Whew. But yeah, as far as tips for her goes, try not to get trapped between her and the lava, as difficult as that might be. Then, hopefully nothing horrible will happen, you won't have to get through this by the skin of your teeth. Like I did. 
just strafe to the side whenever the spider is spitting out the lava and you should be fine. Regardless, the bell is rung, spring has sprung, and there are songs to be sung. Let's go back to Sen's Fortress. For realsies this time. Just got to make it back up through Blight Town. Oh my god, that took forever. <clears throat> well, at least we're finally here at Sen's Fortress. <sighs> And as long as we carefully time ourselves, we can walk right through these passing axe blades. No problem. The only real problem is making sure that this snake lady with the lightning doesn't hit me at the wrong time and get me caught on the traps. Some range helps though. Bows or magic. That is, until we come to these pendulums right here. These ones are a little closer together, which means we've got to get through the whole group of them all at once instead of only a few at a time. But here, we can make use of some, uh, stranger mechanics. Specifically, a quick quit out and reload. It might take some attempts, but eventually you'll find yourself over here, on the other side of the axis. Right? Yeah, it totally works like that. No funny business at all. Moving on. It's next boss time, which means we're fighting the Iron Golem. This one isn't too much of a problem with the heavy armor. I mean, we're never going to be able to dodge the grab in our lives, so there's a certain amount of RNG involved. But as long as we make sure to bash away at those knees, it should be fine given the strength of our weapon. Either one, honestly. One thing to note though, if an attack comes from above and hits the waist coil or hip flap things instead of the leg armor, it won't go towards the stack. So make sure to do horizontal swipes when using a larger weapon like the Titanite Catchpole or other halberds. Either way, Iron Golem isn't much of a problem, and neither is most of what comes next. Right? Right? There's nothing coming next that will make this challenge feel like the worst experience in the universe. Right? So anyway, I head to the rafters. Already killed the gargoyle. He was easy. So I head to the rafters, and some ranged options are helpful here. But honestly, patience is the best practice. Take each of the painting guardians one at a time, wait for them to come, and parry when they attack. No, this part isn't the trouble bit. This is a cakewalk compared to, also, not second gargoyle. He dies quickly too. No, the rafters have nothing on an Orlando archers. I can't tell you how long I spent on this because I might have partitioned that memory away into a dark corner of my brain where it will one day fester into a tumor right on the edge of the occipital lobe and misfire signals to make me see things, things, things that should not be, that are not there, that were not there, any horrors the universe can concoct through the twisted neural network of my rotting brain as it spirals into a cascade of endless, unfathomable nothing beyond the great void ripped between this world and the ever-loving hell that is the walk up this one fucking pathway. Sorry. Things got a little existential there, as they tend to do in the partition zone. Stay away from the partition zone. Anyway, I tried so many strategies to get past these two. I tried maxing out my poise so the arrows wouldn't knock me back. Didn't work. I tried casting iron flesh on myself so I wouldn't get thrown off the edge. Kinda worked. Didn't work. I tried making any positive use of the Titanite catchpole to jump me to victory with more speed than I could walk. Didn't fucking work. I'd almost given up here. Scratched the whole run, but nope. No, 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 no. I persevered. Why? Because I'm insane. We covered that and wanted to make some good content. So what I did instead was throw everything at the wall until something stuck. In this case, it was... It was parries. It was more parries. It's always parries. Because apparently, the only true Lord of Dark Souls is Riposte, the parry god. Dude carries. For those of you scratching your heads at what that means, it means this. Yeah, turns out the great bow arrows can be parried. It doesn't block all damage every time, especially not with the grass crest shield. However, what it does manage to do well is stop me from being pushed in any way, which means that I can walk up this buttress? Is that what this is? Well, I can walk up the butt thing to get to this ledge, where I then can't walk up it because I'm too slow. But have no fear, we've run into this a few times already. 
Didn't mention it until now because this is when it is the funniest to note that some slight inclines are so steep that I can't get over them by walking. This means I need to stop parrying, use the tight night catch pole for the little jump, then immediately turn back around and start parrying arrows again. With a little luck and a push from the other archer shooting me in the back, we make it over to parry the right one to death and finally get into an Orlando. That sucked. How about Ornstein and Smo? Are they going to be trouble? No. First try, tanking through their attacks and trading hits totally works as long as I've got 10 flasks to start. Cool. That's cool. Let's get out of this fucking place before I decide to go kill someone. In fact, fuck it. I'm mad. Let's kill someone. I was too slow to stop Loutrick from killing Anastasia, but I can still kill him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I picked up Havel's gear while in Orlando. So, sorry, I didn't mention it before, but my mind was on other places at the moment. Specifically, not in my skull. Somewhere far, far away instead. Drifting sanity aside, let's head on back to Firelink, restore Anastasia, and place the Lord Vessel. Aside from that, we've got a few other things to run around and pick up. The main thing being some new duds. Some of you may have noticed that I killed Smaug second for the ONS fight, and that was in fact intentional. Why? Well, it's because I want his armor. For reasons. Although, there is a slight problem about getting the gear, and that's crossing the gap to get to Domnall. What is normally a simple jump is now an impassable gap. Unless, of course, we have the Titanite catchpole and some height. From up here, where the firebomb throwing hollow stands, we can do a quick jump, and boom, we're here. Give me the chunk armor, Domnall. You may not want to admit it, but this is what optimal performance looks like. Thick thighs save lives. And beyond saving lives, I also have way more stuff to kill. First, let's head back to Anorlando and go up through the Duke's archives, because I want to finish up Logan's quest for the strong magic stuff. Considering how clutch range has come in from time to time, this seems like the way to go when brute force doesn't work. Also, Duke's Archives gives us access to the DLC if we care to attempt it. Considering I can't roll or jump or use any kind of speedy movement, none of the normal skips are going to be available here, we're going to have to die and head into the Hentai Library. Man, this would be awesome if I was into tentacles. Or Vor. But I'm not. Damn. No boners for prop today. Only murder. Which, in a way... Anyway, aside from not being able to skip and having difficulty catching enemies, there aren't many troubles in Duke's archives either. Like everything else, this is more of a test of patience than it is a legitimate struggle here. The same goes for Seath himself, who goes down in a handful of hits from the catchpole. Granted, that is only if I'm lucky enough to not get cursed while I have to stand patiently in his crystals. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Alright, but now that we have Duke's archives open, we can kill the Hydra and get into the DLC. That's right, it only took four videos, but I'm finally showing off the DLC area. These are some of the hardest bosses in the game, with more aggressive attacks and complex movesets than anything in vanilla Dark Souls. So clearly, they aren't gonna go ahead and crumble to. I couldn't possibly take my way through. Well, that was only Sanctuary Guardian. So, surely, surely Artorias wouldn't get dominated by a tank build that can barely move against his attacks, but I can eat through them and counter for mad damage. Why is this working? This shouldn't be working. Okay, well, how about Manus? Manus is one of the hardest bosses in the... How is this happening? I thought the DLC was supposed to be hard! Calabee. It's gotta be Calamite. He's gotta have the damage and wonky hitboxes that will die at my feet. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think this is why no Soulsborne game after this has the level of poise DS1 has. This is broken. Like, legitimately broken. Well, back in the, back in the base game, uh, we've got Sif, who dies quickly followed by the Four Kings, whose cheese method is already to turtle up in this type of gear. Surely Pinwheel will have to give me some kind of trouble in his clones, and he died too quickly to even be a threat. Well, damn. Nito? 
There's no way I can sit in a corner and fight a wave of death and skeletons without issue. Yep, Tanky Boy can do exactly that. Things got real easy once I thicked up my thighs. I even got Artorius's Abyssal Sword, which now means I get to make the jump back into the Undead Asylum. That lets me kill Stray Demon with no issue, and then Priscilla with no issue. I even took on Moonlight Butterfly for good measure. Everything. Everything falls apart to the tech. Alright, one last chance at some proper fights. Down in the boss rush, that is the Demon Ruins and Lost Isolate. First is Ceaseless Discharge, who I didn't even have to cheese. Then there's Demon Fire Sage, who I already killed the variant of who, with little effort. And then there's Centipede Demon, who is another test of patience. Yeah, nothing too spectacular here. The real problem is waiting for the boss to actually approach and not just keep doing jump attacks over and over. However, once the Centipede Demon decides to get within punching range, we punch it to death. Okay. Guess we're finally on to Bed of Chaos. The end of this long line of endgame. Disappointment, to be honest. Although, this is definitely a fight that could easily go from easy to impossible, depending on how you approach it. Specifically, this fight is only possible with a little firebomb cheese, where you stand right here and aim your attacks right here. And right here. And then, walk up and slap the bug on the inside. However, a quick thing to note, this was the moment that I realized I hadn't set up a backup save or save state for this fight. And this tactic will only ever work on the first attempt. Because there is no way to clear the gap after the floor breaks away. Not while over encumbered at least. Another note to mention is the fact that getting to the middle was actually a bit more of a task than my nonchalance might have previously suggested. That is to say, getting into position without dying is extremely hard. The method I used was to trend to the right so that the Bed of Chaos would do the single swipe and slam instead of the double swipe. This was the only way to be able to get far enough forward to get into position to throw the firebombs. So hey, Bed of Chaos was actually difficult and an interesting obstacle to overcome. Way to go, BOC. You did good at something for Fucking once. Anyway, let's go kill Gwyn. All we gotta do is get past the Dark Knights, and we'll be there in no... time? Wait, I forgot Gaping Dragon? And Copra Demon? Uh, uh, um, I got this, I got this. Get over here, and eh. Okay, and you get over here, and eh. There we go. <laughs> uh, now we're ready to kill Gwyn. Who goes down as easily as ever, since nothing about this build says I can't parry him to death. In fact, given that parries help me get past the worst obstacle in this run, it almost seems poetic to end it where it almost ended before. Good night, Gwyn. So there we are. That was the answer to the question, right? Can you beat Dark Souls 1 while overweight the entire time? That's right. The answer is no. Yeah, the answer is no. Wanna know why? It sends Fortress. Right here. I couldn't actually figure out a way to get past here. Like, legitimately. These swiping pendulums cannot be passed while overweight. Backstepping or even some charging attacks can get through in time, but they aren't available while overweight. So I cheated. Yep. I cheated, took the armor off in order to walk through these areas and continue on. Considering that it led to the Anerlando Archer's problem and the Bed of Chaos garbage, I'd say it was worth it. Those were fun puzzles to work out, even if they were also infuriating. Oh, and I also solo dupe for levels constantly, so like, yeah, completely invalid run. But hey, we had some fun, right? And sometimes that's what really matters in the end. Maybe next time we'll get a legit win. But hey, that's a story for another time. See you soon.